Hi, thanks for tuning in to my Steam Party how-to videos. In this video, we're going to talk about new features released in version 2.4. Those new features involve game instance subsystems. Now, previously, before the version 2.4, whenever we implemented Steam Party, we had to derive our game instance classes from the Steam Beacon game instance, which worked great until you had to have an already existing heavy class or multiple plugins that have to derive from the game instance. So in 2.4, we break that dependency of having to override the the game instance class. Instead, we use something that was released in engine version 4.22, and that's called game subsystems. So now what we need to do is we open up our regular game instance class that I already have. And then we uh, go to the event init. If you don't already have the event init, it's overridable. You click on override and uh, bring it up here. So once you have that event init, we, what we need to do is create a sequence. There we go. And we'll move this class, this execution pin down there. And then what we need to do is first get a pointer to our game system. Now, the, how the way the subsystems work is that they're automatically auto instance, so we don't have to like uh, create it or um, spawn it. So we'll go ahead and just type in uh, subsystem. You'll see get Steam Beacon GI subsystem. Click on that. And what we want to do is make sure that that is valid. All right, so this might be a, a moot point, but because if it's showing up here, it is valid, so it's auto instance. But in the future, they may uh, have it where you can disable them, but right now they're always enabled. We'll go ahead and enable that. And then what we need to do is, basically, uh, since game instances can't have components, uh, this is the workaround, these subsystems. But subsystems can't be uh, blueprinted. They're only C++. So there's no way to set default values. So this is what we're doing. We're setting up party count. It's voice chat enabled. We have to get the uh, pointer to it. And then we can set the variables inside of it. So let's say voice chat. So we want to set voice chat enabled. It's valid. And uh, I do want voice chat. And then I want to set party. Party count. Set max party count. And that one I want to set to, let's say, eight, whatever number we want to set to. And then what other options we have from the old one? So we had all these options to, if you're converting from the old legacy, we have max party, uh, party count, the player state class, the beacon player class, the party host travel delay, and the party host game travel max. So we'll want to build a... Um, Pointer for each one of those. So the next thing is to get the lobby beacon state player class. Lobby set player class. Here we go. And on that one, we want to set our blueprinted class we already have, which would be BPS example. All right. So the next thing would be the party host delay. I want to go ahead and set all these defaults just in case. So that you don't, uh, you can always change them on the fly without looking them up. Party host. So set party host game travel delay and we will set that up to three seconds that gives enough time for the host to actually create the server before moving the party into it and then the next thing is uh, the max retries <laughs> set party host game max retries and we will set that to a pretty high number 30 retries so it'll keep trying over and over again 30 times before it falls out all right, now if, if you go that many retries and you can't connect, then it maybe the, the map is taking way long to load or something else is happening. All right, so this is basically what we need to set up all the variables. However, there's one problem with the 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 system, though that's the way that the, the, uh, the order of functions that are being called. So whenever the init gets called on the game instance, the subsystem is not actually created just yet. It cre actually gets created in the initialization function. So what we want to do is cause a, a small delay. Uh, the reason why we're going to do this versus creating a function and put something else in is because there really is only the uh, init, the shutdown, and then a couple networking um, overridable functions. There's not a lot of options or places we can inject the code into. Uh, so the way I found to do is let's go ahead and do a delay. 
and we'll tie that in. Now we don't want a 0 0.2 second delay. Well, all we really want is one frame. So uh, if people didn't know, the way to get a one frame delay is put a 0, 0.0 in there. That'll actually execute the next frame. So that'll give us time for the initialization to actually create the game instance. And then the next frame, it'll go ahead and run the uh, variables to set that up. And we'll save that. And that's it. That's all you have to do now to use the game uh, subsystem. Now, also, if we want to uh, get any data from or ac access the game instance subsystem for any functions, like, I don't know, start a host. All we have to do is uh, get the same uh, beacon game instance, and we can go ahead and see what there is. Steam party, Steam beacon, accept party invite, clear party beacons. Uh, get Steam Free Avatar, join friend party session, join party to session BP. So all the functions that were available in the old legacy game instance are available through accessing the Steam Beacon game subsystem. And that's it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up on the, uh, the comments below or in the Discord channel. Uh, eventually, I will phase out the old game instance, but for 422, 423, and possibly 424, I will keep the legacy game instance for existing games, but eventually we'll move away from the game instance completely. Thanks again for watching, and hope you have fun developing. Bye.